Hey guys, in this video we're going to quickly go over what the difference is between a smart charger or a battery tender and a dumb charger or a trickle charger. And then we're going to cover how batteries charge exactly briefly, but just so you understand what overcharging is and why that matters with these two types of chargers. And then we're going to talk about what to look for in a battery charger that you're considering purchasing. So stay tuned. All right, the first main difference and this is just the overall main difference between the two types of chargers. These are going to have microprocessor controls in them. So they're basically like mini computers that monitor the state of charge of your battery at any given moment. And they apply the applicable charge to what the battery is telling them that it needs. A trickle charger or a stupid charger, uh, for a lack of a better term, um, is it just pumps a continuous current into the battery, regardless of whether or not the battery can accept that current or not. So how does charging work in a battery? I'm just gonna keep this pretty brief and simple and easy to understand. When a battery is at 0% all the way up to 80%, as a battery charger, any of these charges it up, that first 80% roughly is called the bulk charging. That's when the battery can readily and easily convert electrical energy from a battery charger into stored chemical energy. It happens very quick. Uh, you'll notice with your cell phones and things like that, if you have a fast charger, you can get the majority of that first 80% of a charge in a very short period of time. It's that last little bit that takes a little bit longer. Um, the second phase after you hit about 80% is called the absorption phase. And that's when just think of it like you're blowing up a balloon. When the balloon is completely deflated, you can get a bunch of air into it right away with um, you know, a lot of pressure, a lot of quantity of air going through, which would be the amps, and a lot of pressure, which would be the volts. So you can blow that balloon right up. But if you're trying to maximize it so it hits 100% without popping, that last bit, that last 20% roughly, you are going to slow down. You're gonna to have to keep the same pressure basically because the balloon now is trying to push air back at you. And that's called internal resistance if you were to apply that to a battery. The battery is resisting the, the charge, the chemical reaction. It's not wanting to convert electrical energy into chemical energy anymore. It will, um, it just, it's gonna take a little while. Um, but it's kind of like the same concept of a balloon trying to blow air back at you. Um, so if you're trying to blow that balloon up to 100%, you got 20% left, you're gonna to have to keep the same pressure to keep the air going in there, but you're gonna decrease the quantity of air that you're expelling um, into that balloon. So you're gonna reduce the amps and you're going to keep the volts, the pressure, the same. Now, smart chargers can do that. And once it hits 100%, if you can't tie that balloon off and you had to keep it right at your mouth, you would need to exert the exact same pressure that the balloon is trying to push back at you. You would have to exert that same exact pressure to meet it and equalize it out. If you had to just hold the balloon at your mouth without pinching it off. Um, that's what a float charger does. It brings it up gently to 100% and then once it hits 100%, the microprocessors inside of these tell the, um, it tells the charger to just give the battery exactly what it needs because over time the battery will naturally discharge. So like if you were to leave a double A battery in a drawer and that's why they say on the package, you know, it'll keep 90% of its charge over 10 years or something like that. Where did that 10% go? It was self discharge. Lead acid batteries like battery or car batteries and golf cart batteries, marine batteries, those will self discharge faster than an alkaline battery. But, um, that is the basic concept of how a battery charges. And why that's important is these will taper off and then right when it hits 100%, they'll keep it right where the battery needs to be without going over, without um, overcharging it. This one, on the other hand, this is gonna be an old school thing. It weighs a ton, it's like a brick. These things are light as a feather. I mean, hardly weigh anything. This is pounds, these are ounces. This thing will keep pumping current in regardless of whether or not the battery can accept it. So you're blowing up that balloon, this thing is just gonna keep going until the balloon pops. And that's what happens essentially with the battery. When it overcharges, you're gonna hear the battery bubbling. I mean, it's gonna sound like the inside of your battery is boiling. What's happening, so we're gonna get into now, what is overcharging? Overcharging is especially common with this type of battery. These might do a mild overcharge, 
but they'll self-correct as they go. So it, they'll, it'll get on the brink and they'll bring it back down. Get on the brink, they'll bring it back down. This one just keeps going. So when overcharging is happening, you have your electrolyte, electrolyte inside of your battery and it's um, water and sulfuric acid. Sorry, had a mind fart here. Water and sulfuric acid. Um, and this thing will just keep cranking in electricity. So the battery can no longer, or it can't do it as quickly, convert electrical energy into stored chemical energy. So it has to get rid of that electrical current somehow. And it does that through heat. So electrolysis occurs. Electricity is basically passing through the electrolyte and it's destroying the water molecules that are in the battery acid or the electrolyte. And when it destroys that, it breaks them up. So it's causing heat in there. It's now releasing oxygen molecules, hydrogen molecules. It's releasing hydrogen sulfide as well. And it's just releasing water vapor or water evaporation. So it's boiling off essentially slowly. It's like a low simmer. It's low simmering your battery acid and it's gonna bring that level down. On a lot of the flooded lead acid batteries, which are the ones where you can pop the cap and you can add more distilled water to it to fill them up, not too big of a deal if you catch it in time. Um, if you let it go too long though, that water level, the or electrolyte level will drop in your battery and there are lead plates that are standing up vertically, those will become exposed. As soon as those are exposed to air, irreparable, irreparable damage is starting to happen to your battery. Um, they will, the oxygen in the air will cause sulfation essentially on your battery plates and it'll, it's a crystal like substance which increases the internal resistance, makes it harder to charge your battery. It also makes it harder for the battery to give off charge. Um, uh, so eventually it will just kill your battery. If you build up too much of it, it'll short out. It'll grow in between the plates and short out, especially near the bottom where all of those crystals collect. So boiling off your battery, this thing's a champ of doing it. If you just leave, set this and forget it and you walk away for a month, I mean, your battery's gonna be dead. No doubt about it. I think the lowest setting on this one's 10 amps, but I mean, some of the other trickle chargers would be lower, so it'd take longer to do that. But I mean, this one, no problem. Boil out your battery, no, no time left unattended. So you, with this, you need to know what your amp hours are for your battery. If you had like a 40 amp hour battery and this is 10 amps, you know, you'd want to hook it up for maybe five hours, four and a half, five hours, because it'll put 10 amp hours back in per hour roughly, but that absorption phase takes a little longer. So about five hours is what you'd want to leave. If you left this on for 24 hours, that's an extra 20 hours of charge your battery didn't need. And so it's just going to boil out your battery. If you have a sealed battery, so one where you can't remove the caps and overcharging occurs, you'll hear a venting, like a hissing. You might hear a bubbling sound with that. Um, it's a sealed battery can recycle um, the evaporated stuff back into your battery to a degree. If it goes on too long or if the charge is too strong, it will vent itself out to relieve the pressure. Otherwise, the case of the battery will want to explode, basically. So it will vent that off. Once it vents that off on a sealed battery, you cannot replace it like you can with a flooded battery. So that's the one disadvantage. Um, and also, with some of them, if they have like a, uh, it's like a fiberglass like mat and like a gel inside the battery, I, when you create electrolysis in those batteries, that's especially dangerous too because it'll create little pockets of air as it bubbles inside of that gel substance, the electrolyte substance, and that prohibits the conductivity of your battery. So you're ruining your battery in two ways. You're getting the stuff out and then you're making it so it can't conduct as well. So that is how um, overcharging works and why it's important to stick with a smart charger, especially if you're gonna set it and forget it and you don't wanna constantly monitor it with one of the old school ones. So now we're gonna look into what should you look for in a battery charger. First of all, if you have an old school one, I just get rid of it. They are antiquated, they are obsolete, no good. Um, they, they do work, they, I guess, have their place, but they're especially dangerous. They lack a lot of the safety features. Um, a lot of them, if you touch the ends together, you know, you'll fry the unit, you'll short it out. Uh, they, there's just no safety with them. They, once you plug it in to the wall, they will you know, spark if you touch them together. So we're gonna wanna just get rid of those. We're gonna stick with the smart chargers, what smart chargers and what you're gonna look for. Uh, like I said, these two are my personal favorites. 
Um, Schumacher brand here. This is Duracell 7.5 amp charger. I got this at Batteries Plus. Um, this one I got at a local store, but I'll have an Amazon affiliate link below. This one's actually my personal favorite. This is the one that stays hooked up to my batteries at all times, and I'll get to why. And um, this one's my backup. And then this one, really, I have one major complaint with it. It works, no doubt about it. This one has, I believe, a um, yeah, 15 amp rapid charge. It can also, I believe, jump start a battery. And no, I apologize. 15 amp rapid charge and three amp maintainer. So it does maintain batteries. However, with this one, I'm not trying to knock the company or anything because my use for batteries, battery chargers for the most part, is my indoor battery bank. Um, any of these brands will tell you that they don't want their charger used indoors. So I can't really hold it against them. What I don't like about this model, and I've tried several other amp versions of this, so higher and lower ones, what they do when you plug in the Schumacher brand is if they have the feature of a um, desulfation or an equalization mode, um, wherever that is, somewhere on here, it will automatically um, try to desulfate or equalize your battery. What that is, is a controlled overcharge. It is trying to send in so much current into your battery, more than what your battery can take, and it's designed to break up the sulfation crystals that are on your battery, the lead plates. And it's supposed to be a controlled overcharge that can take eight to 10 hours. So I run this indoors. If I'm doing that, I'm releasing hydrogen gas, which is explosive. I'm releasing oxygen, which is explosive. I'm releasing hydrogen sulfide, which is poisonous into my house. And I, I let this thing run for like an hour once. I had a sore throat for uh, two, three days. So don't do it. Don't do this one inside. Garage might be fine, but I hooked this up to two brand new batteries. Brand new. They had the sticker on them that was, I think, a month prior to me purchasing them. They still had a full charge when I tested them with a voltmeter, and this thing ran them through the ringer of um, a, a equalization mode. And I don't know how long it would have gone, but it was just boiling my battery. It sounded like you put your the stove on medium, and the water's already to boil, and it sounded like the lid was on there just bubbling and bubbling and bubbling away. So outdoors or in the garage, I think this one is fine. I keep it, anyways, I can't return it at this point. I think I returned like five or six of them to Walmart, but I keep this one just because it is 15 amp and in a pinch, if the power was out and I had access to a generator and I needed to put 15 amp hours back in per hour into a, my battery bank, I would pull them outside and hook this up and try to get the current in there as fast as possible. These two, are less of a charge, so they're um, are less amperage, so they are more gentle on your battery. Um, these are going to be great for a car battery, marine battery, small battery bank set like mine, which is two six volt golf cart batteries in series, which twelve volt battery when connected. Um, these are just fine for that, no problem. Um, if you have a huge battery bank, you're probably going to want a bigger charger, but this is fine for my purposes. Uh, the Duracell one's great. Um, I used this one for a full year and I had no problems with it. It does have an equalization or desulfation mode, but you have to select it. It's optional. Whereas this Schumacher one, it forced it upon you right upon when you plugged in the charger. So that's great to have. This one is for 12 volt or 24 volt batteries. It's a 7.5 amp and um, it has the little indicators of 25, 50, 75, and 100%. And really, it's, it's a good charger. I've had no problems with this one whatsoever. Uh, what I noticed about this though, with I keep a voltmeter automatically, an electric one connected to my batteries. Uh, when this gets up to 100% and it's fully charged, the battery seems to fluctuate. So it'll be at, you know, it'll bring up to 13.2 and then it'll drop back down. And when it gets down to 12 point, I don't know what the mark is. I was never around to see it, but maybe 12.6 or 12.7, then it kicks back on and puts a bit of a surface charge back on it. It doesn't hold the battery level at a certain point. Whereas this one, um, this one is my favorite. It's a four amp. If I could do an, uh, have a do-over, I'd get the five amp one. Um, 
because it's still gentle enough for any of the batteries that I mentioned, the car, marine, golf cart batteries, as long as you don't have a huge bank of them, this one's just fine for it. Single or two batteries together is fine. Um, it's a gentle charge though, so it's gonna take a little while, but four amps um, is what it is. It's a gentle charge. This is good for six volt batteries or 12 volt batteries, um, AGM, lithium, and you get to select everything. This one, again, just like this one, set it and forget it. Uh, what I like about both of these chargers is they come with additional connectors. So you have the eyelets or you have the alligator clips. And then they both also come with fuses so that if there's a surge or whatnot, if you screw something up, you hook it up incorrectly, the fuse will blow and it will save the unit. Um, the Schumacher uh, does not have that fuse and it only has the alligator clips. So. Um, so that is great. And then also you can disconnect the ends. So you can leave these hooked on to a battery, go drive your golf cart around, leave this hooked up. And once you come back, you just leave this plugged in at all times or this one, just plug them back in. Easy, easy, easy. Uh, so yeah, when it comes down to the battery charger that you choose, just make sure that you get the right amps relative to the size of your battery. A rule of thumb is 10% or under, maybe between five and 10% of your total battery's amp hour capacity. So if you had a 50 amp hour battery, like a lot of small car batteries would be equivalent to, um, you know, four amp, five amp, that's gonna be just fine. You get up to like a 20 amp charger for a 50 amp hour battery, it's gonna lead to overcharging um, just naturally. So you wanna kind of keep it at a gentle rate by following the five, 10% rule. Um, other than that, again, none of these are advertised as being worthy of using indoors. I, there's a liability or a disclaimer for all of that and I'm not telling you to use them indoors either. Even though I do it, I'm not telling you to do it. That's something you have to assess the risk on your own. Uh, always have proper ventilation. Uh, don't put a case over your batteries that doesn't have a way to vent out. But um, I, I just don't think you can go wrong with a Deltran battery tender. That's the actual brand, Deltran battery tender. Four amp, five amp. You can't go wrong with this one for sure. You simply hook it up. It has reverse polarity protection. So if you touch these together, it'll be fine. If you uh, hook them up to the wrong terminals, if you put the negative on the positive, positive on the negative, it's not gonna engage. It will only work when hooked up correctly to a battery that has a minimum charge. So if your battery is 100% dead, it's not gonna pick it up. You're gonna have to put a surface charge on it by jumping your battery temporarily for a few minutes with a like a car battery that's running uh, to put a little bit of a surface charge on it so this recognizes that it's hooked up to a battery. Because if there's no current, to tell the microprocessor that it's hooked up to a battery, it won't charge. And that's a safety feature that all of these have so that you can't just grab the ends or whatnot so, and have electricity try to pass through you. So anyways, I don't think you'll have any problems with the battery tender with a Duracell if you wanna get this at batteries and bulbs. Um, I will have an affiliate link for Amazon for this down below. Um, Schumacher as well, again though, if you're gonna use any of these indoors, which I'm not telling you to do it, I definitely would not do this one. I, and like I said, I'm not slandering them. I did write to the company. They did tell me that this is supposed to automatically desul desulfate upon plugging it in. So I'm not just making that up. They confirmed it. And other than that, feel free to check out my website below, homebatterybank.com. We just cover everything from battery banks, battery chargers, power outage preparedness, and generators. So. Have a good day and good luck with your battery charging. And just a quick outtake, close up of these battery chargers. This thing hardly weighs a thing. Schumacher, I think this one's even lighter. Battery tender, this one's stupid simple to use. I've left this hooked up to my battery banks now for, my battery bank now for um, I think four years. And I just do quarterly maintenance, make sure the water level's still good at cells. And other than that, party on with my battery bank. This one's 
great to use. But keep in mind, if you do use it for a battery bank, like I have 215 amp hour battery bank, this is a four amp charger. This really just keeps it topped off. If you, um, there we go, a little focused. If you plan to charge a 215 amp hour battery bank with this, you're gonna be a little hard pressed. If it does do it, it's gonna take a long time because you gotta take 215, if it's at 0%, divide it by four, that's how many hours roughly it's gonna take. So it's gonna be a while, it's gonna be a couple day process with this. That's why I keep something like this on hand where if I had an extended power outage and then I finally got power back and say I wasn't sure if I was gonna keep power very long, I'd wanna hook something like this up so it at least puts 15 amp hours back into the battery per hour instead of four. So I'm getting more bang for my buck. That's why I hold on to this. It does have its place. Um, and then this is my backup. So seven and a half amps, good to go as well. So you can't go wrong with either of these two for sure if you're going to want a gentle charge and maybe use them indoors. So have a good one.